Hello everyone. Let me tell you a story. It happened in the year 1900. A famous scientist of that time, Lord Kelvin, walked into the stage of British Association for Advancement in Science, made a statement. There is nothing new to be discovered in physics now. All that remains is more and more precise measurement. But the time proved him wrong. In the same year, 1900, a German physicist, Max Planck, found something unusual while studying the black body radiation. He repeated the experiment over and over again and ended up with the same anomaly. He was frustrated and wrote a paper saying electromagnetic waves doesn't behave in the way it has to be. Five years later, in 1905, the great mind Albert Einstein proposed his new theory that shook entire scientific community. The light behaves as discrete particles. By this theory, he successfully explained the black body radiation and the photoelectric effect. He bagged a Nobel Prize for this. This single experiment opened up a new horizon in physics, the quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, the most magnificent subject in the human history. Hi dear student, myself Regina R. Sebastian, I'm a faculty of Department of Physics. I will be teaching you quantum mechanics for this semester. In this chapter, we will learn inadequacies of classical physics, evidences of quantum theory, the Planck's hypothesis, wave function and probability density, the Schrodinger equation, and particle in a box. Let us imagine we are scaled down to the size of a proton. Here we enter the quantum world, a world where we can travel at the speed of light, we can exist at two different places at the same time or travel back in time. We can walk through the walls or barriers or even teleport ourselves to the distant universes. Quantum world is a spectacular, rather mysterious world. Today, let us start experiencing this magical world. Welcome to the world of small things. In this video, we will be discussing an introduction to quantum mechanics, the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics, the Bohr theory of atom model and its failures, the inadequacy of classical mechanics. Quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the study of subatomic particles like electrons, proton, an atom, a nucleus, etc. This was developed to solve some inconsistencies which occurred in classical theory. In quantum mechanics, particles behave like waves, so they have a wave equation. And these wave equations are governed by Schrodinger equations. Quantum mechanics is purely mathematical. We do all the formulations with the help of mathematics. And of course, we have evidences to prove that our mathematical techniques were correct. Quantum mechanics give rise to many paradoxes such as uncertainty in measurement that is uncertainty principle or the superposition principle which you hear as the Schrodinger's cat. So all those paradoxes are arriving from the quantum mechanics. There are a lot of differences between the classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. First of all, classical mechanics describes the nature of macroscopic particles, while quantum mechanics describe the nature of atomic level objects. In classical mechanics, 
If we know the initial state of a particle, we can predict its future. While in quantum mechanics, the future is always unpredictable. In quantum mechanics, the physical properties such as energy, momentum, etc. are quantized while in classical mechanics, all the physical properties are continuous. Events in classical mechanics is always predictable while quantum mechanics is highly unpredictable. In classical mechanics, we can take a number of measurements on a system without disturbing the system. While in quantum mechanics, if we measure a system, that system will no longer be the same. The system will change when a measurement is made to it. The most important difference is that classical mechanics talks about the continuity, the continuous world, while quantum world is always discrete and discontinuous. The quantum mechanics is also applicable for classical systems also while classical mechanics cannot explain the quantum world. Now let us see the Bohr's atom model. The Bohr's atom model introduces the concept of quantization. The Bohr's atom model said that the electrons are revolving in fixed orbitals around the nucleus or in other words the energy levels are quantized the electrons cannot revolve in any other energy levels other than the fixed orbitals the another postulate was the angular momentum of an electron orbiting a nucleus in one of the energy level will be quantized and that is equal to h by 2 pi times n where n is the orbital quantum number. This model of atom has proposed the idea of quantization of energy and quantization of angular momentum. And in the course of the history of quantum mechanics, this model is very, very important. Even though the Bohr atom model was a successful model in explaining hydrogen and hydrogen-like systems, it has its own failures. The Bohr atom model failed to explain the Stark effect and the Zeeman effect. Stark effect is the effect when the spectral line splits in the presence of electric field and the Zeeman effect is the effect when the spectral lines split in the presence of magnetic field. The another limitation was the Bohr atom model violated the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. According to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, you cannot measure position and momentum accurately in simultaneity. But in Bohr atom model, we have already seen that the angular momentum is well defined for a shell and the position of the shell is also well known. So this violates the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The another limitation was it could explain only hydrogen-like atoms or smaller atoms. It could not explain the spectra of larger atoms. It could not explain why certain spectral lines are more intense than the others, which means that why certain transitions are more probable than the others. It couldn't explain the fine structure of the spectral lines also. Also, Bohr atom model was failure in explaining how individual atoms interact with each other to aggregate to form a macroscopic body. Now we will learn certain inadequacies in classical mechanics which led to the evolution of quantum mechanics. The classical mechanics failed to explain these following phenomena. The first one 
as motion at atomic level. As we are already discussed, the motion at the atomic level is governed by discrete physical properties such as discrete energy levels, discrete momentum, etc. While the classical world is always continuous, it has continuous energy, continuous momentum. So this classical world couldn't explain the motion which is happening at the atomic level. The another failure was, the classical mechanics failed to explain the stability of an atom. In Bohr atom model, we have seen that the electrons moves around the nucleus in a circular path. But we know that when a charged particle moves along a circular path, it will radiate energy. If it radiates energy, it will lose energy and eventually collapse into the nucleus. This will make an atom highly unstable. But this is not happening in the real world. The atom is stable. Therefore, the classical mechanics fail to explain why an atom is stable. Another inadequacy was it failed to explain the spectrum of black body radiation. You will learn more about black body radiation in the coming lecture. The another failure was it failed to explain the discrete spectrum. As we have seen in the limitation of Bohr's model, it failed to explain why spectra of complex systems behave in the way it is. The last inadequacy is, it failed to explain the variation of specific heat of metals and gases. Specific heat or the heat capacity is the amount of heat energy which needs to be supplied into 1 kilogram of a substance to rise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. According to classical mechanics, all the degrees of freedom had a thermal energy of half kT. But this was violated by 3D atomic lattice. In 3D atomic lattice, each atom had a freedom each atom had a thermal energy of 3 kT. This phenomena couldn't be explained using classical mechanics. Again, the variation of heat capacity with temperature couldn't be explained with classical mechanics. The heat capacity seems to vary linearly at the lower heat levels seems to vary to the cube of the temperature at the intermediate heat levels and is constant in the higher temperature levels. And this variation couldn't be explained using classical mechanics. While this variation was successfully explained using quantum mechanics, the quantized form of lattice vibrations phonons. Therefore, quantum mechanics was successful in explaining all the inadequacies which was posted by classical mechanics. So dear student, in today's lecture we have learned an introduction about quantum mechanics, we have learned certain properties of quantum mechanics, we have learned the difference between the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics. We have learned some of the Bohr's atomic model postulates and its limitations. In towards the end, we have learned some of the inadequacies in classical mechanics which led to the evolving of quantum mechanics. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.